YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Antha Barber coming back at you with another haircut tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing a crew cut with a skin fade. Stay tuned. I like to begin each cut by brushing or combing out my client's hair. In this case, I'm going to saturate it to gain a little bit more control over it. Alright, so while my client's hair is still saturated, I'm going to begin my shear work. And there's not a whole lot to explain here. My client wants finger length left behind. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my pointer finger and my middle finger and I'm pulling up a section of hair. And then I'm going to cut anything that falls above my fingertips, leaving finger length behind. So I'm going to make sure that I do that evenly throughout the whole top of his hair. Real quick, I also want to mention that my client has extremely thick hair and I know it doesn't look like I'm pulling up sections very neatly right now and it might even look like I'm missing some hairs as far as when I'm cutting with my shears and I may be, but I also know that when I do this, this dramatic of a haircut, meaning going from long hair to short hair like this, I always cross check my work. I always go over the top. Now that's not an excuse to be sloppy with my work. I'm just saying I'm able to move a little quicker than I normally would to get the job done a little bit faster knowing that I am going to re-go over everything. So while we watch me work my way through this thick ass hair on top, I just wanted to take this time to say shout out to Tito Beats for this fire that you hear in your ear. I'm going to make sure to drop his link in the description so y'all could tap in. All right, so now that I got the top cut to my client's desired length, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin my fade work. And I'm gonna start off by coming in with my gamma hitters, creating my first guideline, which is gonna be my bald guide. I also want you to take notice on the shape that I'm creating when I set this guideline in. And it's not because I wanna be fancy. It's not because I wanna separate myself from other barbers. It's because I wanna complement my client's head shape. It's not very noticeable right now, but you will start to notice that his head does take somewhat of a complicated shape towards the back. And so by me setting in this guideline the way I am, it's gonna allow the haircut to complement his head shape. And that's my number one priority anytime I set any bald guideline in with any client. I always customize it to fit their head shape the best. So now that my bald guideline was created, I'm going to go ahead and check both sides before I move on to my next step, ensuring that everything's set correctly and balanced evenly on both sides. Now that everything looks clean and even, I'm going to come in with my Babyliss Pro Foil Shaver and I'm going to completely bald out that guide I just created. However, when I get towards the top of that guideline, I will use that slight flick out motion so I could demonstrate a nice clean transition from completely bald to stubble because later that's going to help my blend pop.
So now that I have that completely balded out, I'm going to come in with my caliber 50 cal with the lever fully open and I'm going to begin to set and create my next guideline. Alright, you could see that I'm taking my time while I'm creating and establishing this guideline. And now that it's created, I'm now going to close my lever and begin to blend from the bottom of this guide right back up towards the top of it. But what I'm actually going to do in this video is I'm going to take advantage of the notches that are placed on this lever. They're placed to help guide you through the blend. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use every notch. I'm not going to skip one. I'm going to use every notch and work my way up and see how this blend comes out. So for those of you following along and you don't have a clipper that has notches, I would suggest going from the lever being fully closed to about midway to fully open and blend out anything in between that may need it. So as I just stated, I am taking my time um, working my way through this blend. And the reason is, is because I can. <laughs> but aside from that, I actually just placed this ceramic blade on this 50 cal. I did cut um, someone right before him. So it's it's a new feeling to me. And I really, I really like to just get an understanding of the modification that I've done on my clipper opposed to just doing it because everybody else is so right here I'm just I'm putting it through my test you know what I'm saying I'm getting a um I'm getting a feel of it I'm getting an understanding of it and so far I'm not gonna lie I'm extremely pleased I absolutely love it everybody that has seen this so far they keep asking me where'd you get the ceramic blade where'd you get the ceramic blade and all I did was I went on my Amazon Prime, I put in wall ceramic blade. Um, the one that I bought was the first one that popped up and it was two ceramic blades for $5.99 with one day delivery. I couldn't believe it. So I jumped on it and I put a ceramic blade on this 50 cal with no modification needed. All I did was swap out the blade and then I put another ceramic blade on my wall cordless senior that I actually use a taper blade with. So for those of you that are that own a 50 cal and you're you're curious if it runs loud because of the ceramic blade, it absolutely excuse me, it absolutely does not. Um, the clipper does remain silent just like it came. This clipper is definitely one of the quietest clippers that I've ever used. And I was afraid that if I put a ceramic blade, it would be loud because that has been the experience for me in the past with some ceramic blades and especially ones that I purchased that weren't very expensive like these ones. But surprisingly, um, it works absolutely dope and I love it right here. I am showing you the back of the head. Um, you can see that my client's head shape is starting to begin to be. A little difficult for me and and as far as giving him a nice blurry blend but my approach is the same I'm trusting the process and I'm just gonna work my way through my steps and I know the end results so that's what I'm gonna trust and that's what I'm gonna follow and I just wanted to demonstrate that to you guys right here that anything that I do on the sides I do on the back and it all comes together as it should
All right, so now that I finally have that blended out, I'm gonna come in with my wall number one guard with the lever fully open, and I'm gonna begin to set and create my next guideline. I am gonna give myself the same amount of space that I gave myself with the previous guide, that way I keep everything consistent with this blend. All right, so now that my guideline was created with the lever open, I'm now gonna close my lever and begin to blend from the bottom of this guide right back up towards the top of this guide. So I'm literally gonna take this one closed right up to underneath where I just left off with that one fully open. All right, even though it's starting to look blurry, right where I'm showing you, I do see a slight shadow. So I'm gonna come in with my wall half guard with the lever fully open, and I'm gonna begin to attack right above that shadow that I see. Again, that's right above that shadow that I see. And I'm gonna use the fade down process, so I'll close my lever as needed, working my way down until that guide's completely blended out. All right, so considering that this is a crew cut, I am now gonna come in with my wall number two guard with the lever fully open. And this time I'm not necessarily looking to set any guideline in, so I will use that flick out motion as I get towards the top. And what I'm trying to really do right here is stretch the blend some. Again, this is gonna be a crew cut, so it is up high and tight, and it does round off towards the top. So I'm not looking to keep like that box like shape that I typically am. So again, right here, I'm just trying to stretch the blend with my number two with the lever fully open. And once I clean up with that lever fully open, just like the previous guides, I'm gonna close my lever and I'm gonna begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top of that guide. So I'll take that number two close right up to underneath where I just left off with that number two fully open. All right, so right where I'm showing you right here, I'm noticing some weight left behind from that number two closed. So I wanna blend that out a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna come in with my wall one and a half guard with the lever fully open, and I'm gonna begin to attack right above that weight that I see. Again, that's right above that weight that I see. And I'll use that fade down process, so I'll close my lever as needed, working my way down until that guide's completely blended out.
all right so i'm still noticing a shadow right where i just showed you and again i am new to using the ceramic blade on this 50 cal and my client does have a difficult head shape towards the back so tons of shadows are going to be casted and i feel like that's what i'm dealing with now i i don't feel like it's anything like i don't feel like it has anything to do with the fact that i put the ceramic blade on here because before the ceramic blade I feel like I didn't have to do this many steps, but again, I'm going to do them because I want to deliver a nice, clean, blurry blend for my client, and he has a difficult head shape, so I'm going to do whatever is necessary, and right now, coming back to that one guard with the lever fully open, attacking the weight that I see, using that fade down process is necessary, so that's what I went ahead and did. So now it's time to bring that blend into that length on top. So I'm going to use clipper over comb to achieve that and connect it the best way that I can. Again, I'm not trying to maintain like a boxy light shape because this cut does round off. However, I don't want to remove a whole bunch of hair that it begins to not look right. What I'm really trying to do is just remove that weight and connect that blend into the length on top the best way that I can. All right, so right here, I'm gonna resaturate the hair and kind of cross check my work. When I was done with my clipper over comb, I did notice some slight weight left on the side still, but I felt like I would be able to remove that with my shears. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm just making sure that I cut everything clean and evenly and removing any weight from the sides that I see. Alright, so real quick fun fact, I was actually not even going to film this portion of the haircut because my client keeps his lineup so natural, but when I did go in to clean up, I actually nicked him and you could see him bleeding now and I just wanted to include that because when I show you the final cut, you are going to see the cut and here it is <laughs> if you got anything useful out this i ask that you smash that like button if you're new to my channel i suggest you stick around it's only gonna get doper from here i appreciate y'all be blessed and be a blessing i'm out